So May 2005, Paris proposes to Paris. And supposedly he gave her 15 different options for the engagement ring. And she chose that massive rock you're seeing right there. <laughs> June 21st, 2005, I want to be a Hilton Heirs. Paris's mom, Kathy, was the main star and host, but Paris was also on it as well. It was basically a reality show competition and the prize was $200,000, a new apartment, a new wardrobe, and being able to know the Hiltons. It only lasted one season though. August 14th, 2005, Paris wins a Teen Choice Award for her Scream in House of Wax. And then August 28th, 2005, Paris becomes the cover girl for Guess. Guess was apparently rebranding and launching a bunch of new stores and they wanted Paris to be the face of it all. However, apparently when Guess first called to ask if she wanted to be their model, her agent had all of these managers fees and whatnot added on to her payment for it. And they were not having any of that. So Guess actually said no, but then Paris called them back later on. Basically they ended up doing it, but just between her and Guess, no agents or managers involved. So she ended up being paid way less but she also got the publicity and apparently she really wanted to do it. In September of 2005, Paris and Paris buy a piece of art of them with the saying true love on it. But unfortunately, this is also the month that Paris announces that the wedding is off. And what she said about it was, over the last couple months, I've realized that this is the right decision for me. Honestly, I feel like maybe she just wasn't ready to be engaged. And she has since said that she felt like she was just too young. The other Paris, male Paris said, Right now is a very tough time for me. I love Paris very much. This was the best experience of my life. Wow. A little bit depressing, a little bit desperate much. Just kidding. No, that's actually really sad. And that night that they announced that the engagement is off, Paris is out partying with Stavros, Greek shipping air number two. And the man was still dating Mary Kate Olsen at the time. But pretty quickly after that, we realized that Paris and Stavros are hooking up. So Mary-Kate breaks it off with them and breaks it off with Paris as a friend. And I do have a series on the Olsen twins if you wanna watch that. November, 2005, Nicole is on the Today Show and she talks about her and Paris's relationship and she says that they just grew apart. Hmm, I don't know. And then November 11th, 2005, Paris's Your Era's Diary book comes out. Meanwhile, though, in November, Paris is in quite a pickle because the bill for her and Nikki's storage unit from when they moved after the robbery has not been paid and the storage unit goes up for auction. So Nikki and Paris's storage unit is up for auction now. And according to Paris, her moving company was who she was paying through and they didn't pay on time or let her know that the bill was due. Either way, though, this is not good for Nikki or Paris. However, it is extremely good for Nabila Hanis, who, yes, is on Storage Wars, and she bought that storage unit not knowing that it was Nikki and Paris's. Imagine the shock. And of course, Paris was pissed that all of her stuff had just been sold to somebody. And then in March 4th of 2006, Paris wins a Golden Raspberry for Worst Supporting Actress in House of Wax. Raspberry is never good, but I like to think that if anybody were to take that in stride, it would be Paris. Also, this is her publicist, Elliot Mintz, and please remember this man's face. And more bad news, May 2nd, 2006, we find out that Paris and Stavros have broken up. However, after this time, there were plenty of off and on rumors about them, but nothing was ever confirmed. May 12th of 2006, Paris launches a phone game called Paris Hilton's Jewel Jam but she showed up to the Electronic Entertainment Expo already to, you know, sign and promote it late. And then she also called it Diamond Quest. Apparently Diamond Quest was the original name and they had recently changed it, but it still didn't look very good that she didn't know the current name of her own game. May 16th, 2006, Lindsay and Stavros are spotted kissing at a club in LA. Paris and Stavros had obviously just broken up and Paris was not pleased as you can probably imagine. And the next day we see Paris and Brandon Davis leaving a club and making some really horrible comments about Lindsay. Brandon said that Lindsay was poor cause she's only worth 7 million. <sighs> what a peasant. Calling her a fire crotch and saying that her lady parts shit freckles. And Paris didn't technically say anything, but she laughed so hard the whole time, said, I love you, bitch, to Brandon. So I'm guessing her and Lindsay are no longer friends at that point. A fire crotch song was also made after this by Brandon Davis, which you can hear online. 
And if you want more detail on this particular incident, definitely go watch Mila Tequila's series on their feud. But also, you can look up the footage, that paparazzi footage, where Paris is wearing the red dress. That's the one. I just can't show it here because he says way too many foul things. But here he is in a homemade t-shirt. And then a few days later, May 23rd, 2006, Paris is seen laughing, listening to the voicemail that Lindsay had sent her on the night of the fire crotch incident. And then Paris calls Lindsay a see you next Tuesday, which I totally forgot about that phrase until I did the Kesha series. Foul word, but fantastic phrase. All right, so June 4th, 2006, The Simple Life season four airs. This season was called Till Death Do Us Part, and basically they tried out being housewives, family women. And even though Paris told us that it would be Kimberly Stewart, the studio clearly nixed that idea because it was still Nicole. However, it is made clear from the very first episode that they do not like each other. Although the clip I'm about to show you is not from the very first episode, I just thought it was funny. So, how do you like be like you? Uh, you have to say, that's hot. No, I don't say that. That's embarrassing. Then June 5th, 2006, Paris releases her single, Stars Are Blind. And also in June 2006, Paris is launching her third fragrance, Eris, and Air for men, and does a meet and greet. And David Hans Schmidt, who is known to release nude photos and videos of celebrities and is aptly called the Sultan of Sleaze, he happens to be there wanting to get some stuff signed by Paris. And what did he want signed? Some stuff from Paris's storage unit that he had gotten from Nabila Hanis so that he could see if they could make a deal. He told her to make it out to the guy who has my storage locker stuff. She didn't, but they did plan to meet somewhere and figure it all out. Unfortunately though, they did not end up making a deal. I guess she didn't offer them enough money or something, but unfortunate for her because they still have all of her stuff and I don't know if she realized how truly bad this would get. But in the meantime, July 11th, 2006, Paris releases Turn It Up another single. And on the 30th of July, she appears on an episode of Girls Next Door. It was Hef's birthday episode and Donald and Ivanka Trump were also in it. In August of 2006, Lindsay does an interview with Elle where she talks about the fire crotch incident. She said that they also prank called her that night after their encounter with the paparazzi. She also went for a quick jab and said, obviously Paris is very comfortable making videos which is really a, a low blow. I mean, Paris has obviously been unkind as well, but that is below the belt. Also in August 2006, though, we get a press release from spoofcard.com. So spoofcard.com, let me explain. It's basically a service that changes the phone number that appears when you're calling or texting somebody so that people wouldn't know that it was you. I'm sure lots of celebrities have used this before just so people can't track the phone number back to them and keep their phone number but it's also great for pranking or hacking. In this case, Spoof Card said that they had dropped Paris as a customer because she had allegedly obtained unauthorized access into other customers' voicemails. And guess whose voicemail it was? Lindsay's. Next, so SpoofCard.com alleged that Paris had used their service to hack into Lindsay Lohan's voicemail. However, Paris's publicist said that she wasn't being accused of hacking into Lindsay's voicemail. So a little he said, she said there. And speaking of hackers, August is also when Paris is called by a hacker named Lucky225. And shout out to Angelo on Instagram for sending me the audio of this call because that was helpful. Basically, they called her up and helped her to set up a password for her voicemail, which seems like the opposite of what a hacker should be doing, helping you to password protect yourself. And he also straight up referred to himself as an experienced hacker. And honestly, it was such an odd call. And Paris seems very confused by the whole concept of a voicemail password and hacking into voicemails. But then Lucky225's friend in the back says, well, shouldn't you know all about this because you hacked into Lindsay's voicemail? So that was a pretty uncomfortable moment of the call. Anyway, she also talks about her storage unit getting broken into and people trying to sell her stuff on eBay. She also said that her address got leaked on the internet and someone left a love note at her house. And then the hackers ask her if it's this very specific address. And she says, no, it's this other one. I guess she had two leaked, but she says that the first one that they asked about was her grandmother's address. 
And at the end of the call, they save her number in their phone under 007 per her request. August 22nd, 2006, Paris releases her album, Paris. Dr. Luke did help to produce this album, and if you want more information on him, go watch my Kesha series. But the album was through Eris Records, her record label. And August 28th, 2006, Kesha barfs in Paris Hilton's closet. She had done background vocals for her on her album, and they were partying, I guess, celebrating the release. They weren't super close before, and they definitely were not close afterwards. And then September 12th, 2006, Paris stars in the movie Bottoms Up. It is a classic rom-com, almost reminds me of Hallmark movies a little bit. And then September 26, 2006, Paris is arrested for a DUI. Apparently she was driving to In-N-Out Burger, very relatable, although you probably shouldn't drive there drunk. And supposedly she'd only had one margarita, but she hadn't eaten before, which maybe that's why she's going to In-N-Out. But anyways, she was a little drunky. And then October 8, 2006, Paris and Nicole are seen getting dinner together. And all the reports said that they seemed like they were best friends again and were laughing and having a great time. And Paris's publicist said that he couldn't say whether Paris and Nicole were best friends again or why they were eating out, but everyone hopes that they are all good now. So November 2006, Paris's license is suspended for the DUI. Then November 9, 2006, paparazzi catch Lindsay after she's leaving somewhere and she calls Paris a see you next Tuesday but then immediately denies that she said it and says her and Paris are great friends, even though she is on film saying it. Then November 26, 2006, Lindsay is outside a club and says that Paris hit her. This is a video that Paris Hilton, and I'm saying this on tape. She hit me last night for no reason, apparently, at my friend's house, and I didn't know she'd be there, and she hit me. So you upset about that? How do you feel about that? Me. And it hurts, and it's not okay. It's not cool. And I'm sorry for everyone that thinks I'm crazy. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. And then the next day, Paris and Brittany and Lindsay are all leaving a club together. Paris and Brittany were pretty close at the time. You saw them leaving clubs together a lot. And it was rumored that Lindsay was pretty jealous and kind of wanted in on that friendship. And so the night that they're leaving the club with Lindsay is where we get this video and the iconic photos. So Paris, did you hit Lindsay? Yeah, no. take it, yeah, take Ask her, she's right take there. Take it, take it. Lindsay, tell them the truth. Yeah, so what's going on here? Paris never thinks she's my friend. Nice Are your friends? So that yes. video statement earlier today was wrong? And here are the photos. Paris said afterwards, like way later, that Lindsay was actually butting in. And she wasn't actually invited to get in the car with them and go back with them, but Paris just didn't want to embarrass Lindsay in the moment. A lot of people are pretty sure, though, that it was staged by their publicists to stop the tabloids from talking about them anymore. And the reason I'm pretty sure of that is because that dude bringing Lindsay out in the video, maybe scroll back and watch the video again, the dude bringing Lindsay out to the car is Paris's publicist. Remember when I told you to remember his face? Yeah, that's why. That's him. So, like, why would he be bringing her out if it wasn't staged? December 19th, 2006. National Lampoon's Pledge This comes out, which Paris stars in and also helped produce. It is a classic early 2000s sorority movie. And of course, who is the president of the sorority? Paris Hilton. Simon Rex plays Paris's boyfriend in this movie. And apparently they did hook up for a while. I say apparently, they're literally hooking up in this picture after her and Nick Carter broke up. And we so in January of 2007, Paris pleads no contest to alcohol-related reckless driving. And her lawyer was obviously able to get it taken down from a full DUI to just that. She got three years of probation and $1,500 in fines plus an alcohol education course for this. And people kind of thought that three years was very long for probation and so they were speculating that the judge in this case was trying to make a point that judges wouldn't give celebrities special treatment. Although they definitely do, even if this judge didn't. And then January 23rd, 2007, a website called parisexposed.com surfaces. So basically, Nabila and the Sultan of Sleaze had been trying to sell stuff from Paris's storage locker to tabloids for quite a while, but apparently a lot of tabloids weren't taking it because they felt it was too inappropriate. So instead, they made this website where you could pay $40 
and see everything that was in the storage locker. And man, this was a lot of stuff, like dirt, crazy stuff that you would never think. If you want to see even more of it, go to popculturediving2009.com. I'm going to show you all some of it. So lots of photos. First of all, we had childhood pictures. Here's another cute shot of Paris as a tween. And here she is in kind of a alternative phase. There's also plenty of party pics. Here she is with Jason, Sean, Nicole. Here she is with Nicole and Nikki. Another one. We got some modeling pictures like this one. More pictures with friends like Nicole. This is from The Simple Life. Pictures with significant others. Again, Jason Shaw here. And here's one of her and Ingrid Casares, who she was reportedly hooking up with slash dating at some point. Also pictures with other celebrities like Gwen Stefani and Michael Jackson. And then they also had nude photos in there. Nude photos of Cisco Adler, completely nude. Some partially nude photos of Paris. This is not one of those. Obviously, I can't show that. This is just Ian Summerhalder with Nikki. There was also lots of documents, prescriptions for Paris, for hydrocodone, Ambien, and Valtrex, which is for herpes. And there was also a prescription for an Amber Taylor for Xanax. There was also a doctor's note written to Amber Taylor about a miscarriage. And Amber Taylor happens to have the same birth date and address as Paris Hilton. And you can see on the signature line that she started to sign with a P and then changed it and did Amber Taylor as if someone might have forgotten their alias. There was also letters from companies. By the way, do you spot Diddy right there? Yeah. And fan mail. There was love letters, including this one to Nick Carter and some to Jason Shaw as well. Lots of lovey stuff with Jason Shaw. There was also hate letters. Not just love letters, gotta have the hate letters too. There was also a letter from Casey Johnson claiming that Paris slept with her boyfriend when she was underage. And we also got stuff like phone numbers, notes, receipts, a real ID, a fake ID, and a passport, and tons of other documents including like letters from company, random thoughts and feelings and notes. We also had some video and audio including tapes of them at clubs. There's Brandon Davis including one where Nicole is licking a white powder off of a plate. Sex tapes, a clip of Paris singing without auto-tune which you can find on Pop Culture Died in 2009 and on SoundCloud. The audio of a phone call between Nikki and Don Thrasher where they talk about how Rick Solomon got Paris addicted to substances at 17. A video of Paris calling Lil' Kim weird. A phone call where she calls Bijou Phillips and Corey Feldman lame. Videos talking about substances, selling sex tapes and other random stuff. Multiple videos saying slurs and substances. And lastly, some substances were also found as well. Paris had deactivated her MySpace, but a few days later she jumped onto Starverse's MySpace on January 27th to shout out to her fans and give a message. Basically, she just wanted to say that that person in all the storage locker things is no longer the type of person that she is and that that was from a different time of her life. She said, It's too bad that people treat me in such an unkind and cruel way when I have done nothing to anyone. And it was posted at exactly 11.11 in true Paris Hilton fashion because that's her favorite number. And her publicist made a statement publicly to say that she was 20 years old when she made the racially insensitive comments and that she's not racist and she deeply regrets it. Although I do think it would have sounded more remorseful coming from her own mouth. Paris also got to work immediately suing Nabila, her husband, and multiple other people for copyright and invasion of privacy. And they did give her a temporary restraining order and took the website down. But at that point, the damage had already been done. It was all over the internet for a week, so never gonna be gone, essentially. February 13th, 2007, Paris trademarks the phrase, that's hot, which I would just like to say that I am using only for educational purposes in this video. Please don't sue me, Paris, please. Then February 2007, Paris is driving and a police officer stops her. Apparently she was driving from a video store where she had picked up some DVDs. Yes, what a vintage sentence in the year of 2021. And she was going 70 in a 35 zone and she had her lights off. Although she and her publicist claimed that they had no idea that her license was suspended, it was, so that didn't make anything any better. Luckily for her though, this was not another DUI. She said she was sober and they also didn't test her for alcohol, so we wouldn't know if she, even if she wasn't. But at that point her car got impounded. And then early 2007, we find that Paris might be dating Josh Henderson. He's an actor and he had also dated Ashley Simpson in the past. And in March of 2007, one of her friends or sources says that 
Paris is completely over Stavros, so I guess that's confirmation that they're broken up for good. And also in March of 2007, Kim's sex tape is leaked, which Paris has already been through this a couple times, and they're friends. And people said that this was around the time that her and Kim actually stopped being friends, although Kim has said that it was already growing distant. Supposedly, though, she never reached out to Kim about the sex tape, which I think really solidified the end of their friendship because they had both been through that, and I'm sure Kim was kind of expecting more support from somebody who kind of understood what she was going through. And then April 19th, 2007, Lindsay's phone is hacked. And again, people aren't sure that she was hacked. It could have just been photoshopping. I talked about this in my Lindsay Lohan series. If you want to watch that, go ahead. But if it wasn't photoshopped, we get some very interesting information. I will move in a second, but there are messages between Paris and Lindsay, where Lindsay is accusing Paris of spreading misinformation about her to Perez Hilton. And then Paris replied saying that she doesn't talk to Perez and calling Lindsay a lesbo and bipolar, which there's nothing wrong with being gay or being bipolar, but it's pretty clear that Paris is trying to insult Lindsay. At that point, Lindsay calls Paris a see you next Tuesday again and tells her to go sex someone off. On May 4th, 2007, we find out that Paris's probation is revoked and she's sentenced to 45 days in jail. And this was for not complying with her parole because her parole said that she shouldn't be driving because she had gotten into UI and she was when she was driving from that video store. And people around Paris and a lot of people in the public felt like this was actually unfair. People were saying that she was being targeted because she was a celebrity and that they were intentionally giving her a harsh sentence to try and make an example of her and trying to make a point that they wouldn't go easy on celebrities, which I still feel like 45 days in jail is not that bad. I don't know. I've never gone to DUI. If someone has, please let me know. Is that a bad sentence? Is that an easy sentence? There was also a petition made to Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was the governor of California at the time, to pardon her, but of course that did not end up happening. And to make matters worse, right around that time, ParisExposed.com relaunched for a brief time. But then the website glitched and exposed everybody who had paid for its credit card information and names, so they had to take it down, of course. And then May 28, 2007, The Simple Life Season 5 premieres. This one was camp-themed and they were camp counselors, but it was actually like a couple's camp, which was interesting. And in the first episode, they make up. So The Simple Life Season 5 airs, and in the first episode, Paris and Nicole become friends again or for the cameras at least they do. Paris said that it was all just the tabloids and Nicole said, half the things that the tabloids said that I said were not true. So basically they blame the whole thing on the media. And I'm sure that the media did play a huge part, but also the media isn't always completely fabricated. So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And then June 5th, 2005, sorry, I was trying to emulate that. June 5th, 2005, Paris goes to jail to start her 45 days. And then two days later, June 7th, 2007, Paris is out of jail and she's going to do house arrest instead. Supposedly it was for an illness, which we find out later is panic attacks and anxiety. But a lot of people were very pissed about this and felt like they were giving her special treatment and so she ended up having to go back to court. And then June 13th, 2007, Paris has to go back to jail. She was pissed and she felt it was completely unfair, but of course the public felt that way when she got out of jail after two days and was able to do house arrest. She did do an interview from jail though and said that she felt like maybe this was her time to find her purpose in life. And also during her jail time, she received a lot of threats from other inmates. Some good news though, whilst Paris is in jail, Hugh Hefner says that she always has a place on a Playboy cover if she wants it. However, he did say that he felt like her mother was in the way of that and that her mother didn't want her to do a cover. Although I don't know if he actually talked to Kathy Hilton ever. Then June 26, 2007, Paris is finally released from jail. And she actually only ended up serving 15 days in jail, not 45, because they let her out early for good behavior and also jail overcrowding, which is usually what they let people out for, or at least celebrities. June 28th, 2007, Paris goes on Larry King Live. And I mention this because Larry asks her if she ever visits any friends in rehab, which he was clearly trying to get her to say something about Lindsay because Lindsay was currently in rehab. And she says, I don't have any friends in rehab. So I guess we know where they stand. In July 2007, Paris is dating Tyler Adkins, who is a surfer. Fun. 
and then August 5th, 2007, the last episode of The Simple Life airs. August 15th, 2007, Lindsay has just gone to rehab for the third time and a poster appears outside of Paris Hilton's house. Now it has Lindsay on the cover, but it's for a lost dog. And it had multiple references to her eating disorder, addiction issues, car chase, DUIs, etc. Paris never confirmed that she made this and she might not have. Honestly, somebody could have just made it and put it up on her gate because everyone knew that Paris and Lindsay didn't like each other. But of course, everyone was going to assume that Paris did make it. September 8th, 2007, Paris sues Hallmark because they use That's Hot on a greeting card and she trademarked that. And I'm saying it for educational purposes. And I'm only showing this for educational purposes, but it is kind of funny. And then at the end of September, Paris goes on David Letterman. They really wanted her to go on and she really didn't want to, but after they asked her so many times, she decided to go on if they promised not to talk about the jail time. And she really hadn't done many interviews other than that Larry King Live one since she left jail. And she said that she really didn't want to talk about it in the media. She didn't want to have to do this whole press thing about jail. But here's how it went. Uh, and and t t tell us, what it, now looking back, Looking back on that experience, what, what have we learned? What can you tell us? What, what, what's different about you going forward as you look back? <laughs> well, obviously it was a very traumatic experience. That was, you know, I, and I, I, I think, did it, so yeah. I, can, I feel like I can do anything You now. can survive anything. Yeah. Basically, he just made her super uncomfortable. He talked about jail continuously throughout the whole thing. And she said that on commercial breaks, she would ask him to please stop. And he would say, okay, yeah, I will. And then wouldn't, which is just shitty. And after that, she said she would never go on David Letterman again. He did apologize eventually, but still. Then February 8th, 2008, Paris stars in and also produces this movie, The Hottie and the Naughty. This is a super predictable early 2000s rom-com wherein the boy likes the hot girl, but the hot girl can't go on a date with him because her best friend who's super ugly can't get any dates. So they have to find a date for her. And then he discovers that actually this girl that he's been so repulsed by this whole time, who had a fantastic personality from the start, is actually beautiful. After she gets a makeover, of course. And guess which girl Paris played in this movie? The hot one, of course. And February 9th, 2008, the next day after this movie comes out, Paris and Lindsay are reportedly fighting again, this time over whose music Timbaland will produce. So... We also discover in February 2008, though, that Paris is now dating Benji Madden. He's in the band Good Charlotte and also brothers with Joel Madden. At the time, he was 29 and she was 27. And people were a little bit surprised because Benji Madden had literally just called off his engagement with Sophie Monk, who is an Australian star. She hosts Love Island Australia, which I love. So March 14th, 2008, Paris goes on a radio show and she says that Kim's butt looks like cottage cheese stuffed in a trash bag. That is so super specific and super mean. She said later though that she was just joking. Haha. <laughs> I would literally cry, like cry myself to sleep for nights. In April of 2008, Paris is all over MySpace talking about Benji Madden and how in love they are. And she even said that he had written a song for her. It was called Shine Your Light. And I tried to find it in their discography, but it is nowhere to be seen. So maybe they never ended up releasing it. And May 2008, Paris goes on David Letterman again, even though she said she wasn't going to go back on, but he apologized and said, I know I want to spend the rest of my life with Benji. And Nicole was also dating Joel Madden at this point, who is Benji's twin. And I'm not sure what Paris and Nicole's relationship was exactly like at this time. I mean, how could we ever really know? But she did say that the two of them talk about how fun it would be to be sisters-in-law. So, seems like they're on good terms, at least in the press they are. She also said that she knows that Benji would be the best father and she loves seeing him play with Nicole and Joel's baby. In August 2008 though, Paris is spotted with Krista Wolf. He is the founder and CEO of MySpace, and he was 42 at the time, she was 27. She was still dating Benji though, supposedly, so we have to assume that these were just rumors, although they were seen together partying and hanging out, so who knows. Also in 2008, if we recall, John McCain and Barack Obama were both running for president against each other, 
and John McCain put out an ad campaign targeting Obama and he compared in the commercial Obama to Paris and Britney. And his point was basically like, Obama wants to be famous. He doesn't really care about the job of the presidency. And apparently this was specifically because he did more appearances than in other campaigns in the past. But Paris then decided that she wanted to release a little ad campaign of her own via Funny or Die. Hey America, I'm Paris Hilton and I'm a celebrity too. Only I'm not from the olden days and I'm not promising change like that other guy. I'm just hot. But then that wrinkly white hair guy used me in his campaign ad, which I guess means I'm running for president. So thanks for the endorsement, white haired dude. And I want America to know that I'm like totally ready to lead. Okay, so here's my energy policy. Barack wants to focus on new technologies to cut foreign oil dependency. And McCain wants offshore drilling. Well, why don't we do a hybrid of both candidates' ideas? We can do limited offshore drilling with strict environmental oversight while creating tax incentives to get Detroit making hybrid and electric cars. Energy crisis solved. I'll see you at the debates, bitch. So that campaign video is hilarious. But I hope we also notice how she kind of like goes out of character for a second. She's doing the Paris Hilton character and then she starts talking about the energy crisis and she seems like a different person almost. And then September 9th, 2008, Paris's first documentary, Paris, Not France, is released. Then September 30th, 2008, Paris Hilton's My New BFF, the series, comes out. Basically, this is a reality show where people competed to be Paris Hilton's new best friend, and they also had a ton of celebrity guests as well. I mean, Paris, I plead to you that you more know so much than anybody else what it's like to have people see something of value and worth and hate you because you're beautiful and you didn't ask for it. I did not ask for this. It was given to me. I used to come home and cry in high school and say, Mom, I don't want to be pretty anymore. And she'd be like, you stop it. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. And, like, you were born into it. I was born just the way I am. Like, people call me Bikini Cory back home because I have earned it. So there's some comedy for your day. Anyways, October 23rd, 2008, Paris decides that she's going to take her ad campaign for president a little bit further with a music video called Paris for President. Also in October of 2008, Paris is robbed by Nick Prugo and Rachel Lee for the first time. And yes, this was part of the bling ring, as it was called, and I definitely will do a series on it eventually, just give me some time on that. But basically, it's these teens that robbed a bunch of celebrities that they were obsessed with. So they chose to rob Paris because one, she's Paris Hilton, two, they were obsessed with her, one of the celebrities that they were obsessed with, and three, they thought that she was dumb. Basically, they thought that it would be easy to rob her and not get caught. They said that they found a key under her front door mat, so they were kind of right. It was easy for them to just let themselves on in. And I will now be removing the key from under my front door mat, so don't even think of trying to rob me. Even though I know you probably weren't because I clearly don't have anything to steal. They only took a few things though, hoping that she wouldn't notice. And she didn't, at least at first. And after this, they robbed her again a few more times, but again, just small stuff so that she wouldn't notice. So November 7th, 2008, Paris stars in Repo, the genetic opera, which was a movie. It is described on Wikipedia as science fiction, gothic rock, opera horror. It apparently grew a cult following, so that's interesting. And if you've seen this, please let me know about it because I kind of was too scared to watch, to be honest. This was the least scary picture of her that I found on the internet in this movie. In November of 2008, Paris and Benji break up. Supposedly, she was just really busy, she didn't have time for the relationship, they wanted different things, yada yada yada, all the stuff that you normally say when you break up in the public eye. There had been some cheating rumors about Benji, though, which he denied, of course. There were also some rumors, though, this is not Benji, this is Prince William. There were rumors that Paris had an affair with Prince William because people saw them at a bar together, which they did meet at a bar, and they did not deny that, but they denied anything else happening. And then November 20th, 2008, in an interview, Paris actually talks about Prince William. She said, I'd be more than happy to date William, so long as he ditches the mousy girlfriend. I couldn't believe it when I met him. He was so awesome and really hot. 
And of course, she was referring to Kate Middleton in that quote, the mousy girlfriend. And can you imagine if Prince William started dating Paris Hilton instead of Kate Middleton? Just try and just picture that world for a second where she shows up to dinner with the queen. It'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Kind of crazy, but very entertaining. In December 2008, we find out that Brittany Flickinger has won Paris's My New BFF show. She talked about how amazing it was to be best friends with Paris after that, and she said how they hang out all the time, and we can go wherever and do whatever we want, and nobody will say no. Must be nice. She also talked about how hard it is to trust people when you're famous, and how creepy fans are, even though she was literally just a fan on a TV show about becoming Paris Hilton's best friend. How quickly you switch up when the fame gets to you. Don't let it get to you, Brittany. Lastly though, she said that Paris is not dumb like everyone thinks and that the dumb blonde thing is not her and that she gets it, which I think is probably accurate. I think the idea that anybody that famous is just like a bumbling idiot is ridiculous because even if you're born into wealth and you're born into fame, in order to stay there, you definitely have to be shrewd. Like, see Brandon Greasy Bear Davis, he's not still super famous like Paris is because he wasn't tactical as much. Sorry, Brandon. Also, sorry to Brittany for showing this picture of her with his hair. I am so sorry, but you chose it, so. December 19th, 2008, Paris reports a robbery at her house. And this is when she finally caught the bling ring robbing her house. She didn't actually physically catch them, but this is when she finally noticed that they had been robbing her. And it wasn't just Rachel Lee and Nick Prugo every single time. The rest of them also tagged along. By this point though, they had already robbed Paris at least four times without her noticing. And Rachel Lee has even said that she had Paris's spare key on her keychain by that time. Subtle flex. And they ended up getting caught because Roy Lopez stole $2 million worth of jewelry. So yeah, she noticed that. By that point though, they had already stolen Birkins, jewelry, bras, dresses. And they even said that they had stolen naked photos of her and blow. Although Paris denied having any blow in her house, of course. Why would you admit to that? In January of 2009, less than a month after My New BFF had finished airing on TV, even though obviously we know that it was filmed before that, we get gossip that Britney and Paris are on the rocks. Supposedly, Nikki Hilton did not like Britney, so that's a huge red flag. And then gossip blogs started reporting that Britney had gone with Paris to the Sundance Film Festival, but Paris kept ditching her. Our snitch, as the gossip blogs call them, uh, supposedly saw her crying and telling Paris to stop ditching her. And we also heard a rumor about Sundance Film Festival that Paris was sucking face with Krista Wolf, which everyone took as confirmation that they were together, but it was definitely still just rumors. In January of 2009, Paris also does an interview with Glamour saying that her and Lindsay are all good, friends again, no beef. So at least that's a positive on the friendship front. Although it's really just ending their feud publicly, they still didn't really seem to like each other. January 29th, 2009, Paris Hilton's British best friend starts. It was on ITV2, which I love because it brought us Love Island, and Sam Hextall was the winner. And February 21st, 2009, Paris wins three Golden Raspberries. Two of them were for The Haughty and the Naughty. She won Worst Actress for that, and she also won Worst Screen Couple for that. And then the other one was for Repo the Genetic Opera, which she got Worst Supporting Actress for. Again, the raspberries are never good, but this is like, wait, I was gonna say something else, but this is like the 13 going on 30 dress, like a different version of it, is it not? Am I imagining things? It looks just like it, except a little bit different, like different colors. Anyways, next part. 